What's up, everyone? So I've gotten a number of questions over the last many months regarding our communication setup for when we go riding off-road. Uh, I've been meaning to do this video for quite some time, but it's a little complicated, so I thought about it and I'm gonna simplify it a lot um, and hopefully just cover the basics to help you guys figure out uh, what you wanna do. So in North America, the FCC is in charge of all the frequencies uh, for communication, and that includes multiple different frequency bands. Uh, some of you probably have heard of CB radio, there's FRS, there's GMRS, there's MERS, and there are ham frequencies. So ham is the amateur radio. Um, so the basic radios you can buy in like Walmart for $10 are likely FRS or GMRS, and they have a limited range due to the hardware uh, and the wattage limitations. Um, and so they're not ideal for communicating across mountainous terrain or longer distances. Um, for that reason, uh, my group uses ham frequencies and ham radios. So I am a licensed ham operator, uh, so are other people in my group. And so we chose to use the uh, most versatile and in my opinion, uh, easiest to use um, setup that we can come up with uh, that also is durable enough to withstand um, riding in the conditions that we ride in mud, rain, everything else, right? So there are lots and lots of options for ham radios. Um, you can get something as basic as what we have here to much, much more expensive radios um, and they will vary in feature set and quality of uh, audio um, and some advanced features as well. Uh, for our use case, we wanted some very basic communication abilities. So what I have here is two Bofeng radios. Uh, so Bofeng is a Chinese uh, manufacturer. Um, they've been making these radios for quite some time. Uh, there are different models. The most popular one is this one, the UV5R. I also have this BFF9 V2 Plus. Uh, this one claims to be uh, of slightly higher power, meaning transmit power than this one. Uh, at the end of the day, there's really very little difference because a lot of the limitations are in the antenna. Um, we choose to run the standard antennas because uh, although you can get a replaceable uh, whip antenna um, that basically screws in here, uh, they are longer and um, more bendy. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> and so they stick out more. Uh, you'll see how I have it hooked up in the backpack. Um, and I just found them a little cumbersome because they would hit the back of my helmet. So we're stick with these um, and they've been so far pretty durable. Now these are not expensive radios. Uh, I'll provide some links to them on Amazon. You can also get them on eBay. Um, they run roughly 20 to $30 depending on time of the year you're going to buy them. Um, they have uh, lithium batteries that actually last pretty much all day for us. Um, they come with a rechargeable uh, station. So you just pop the radio in um, and you're good to go. We considered uh, more expensive options, but really uh, for me at least, it makes no sense to stick a $100 radio in the backpack that I'm gonna fall on uh, if I can pretty much get away with the same type of communication using a $20 radio. Now, um, these radios do cut corners in terms of audio quality, but again, when you're off-road, uh, you just want to hear that your buddy's alive or whether he needs help. You don't need, you know, uh, the most high quality uh, transmissions available. So for our use cases, uh, these are plenty. So basically the way these work is you kind of turn them on. I'm going to turn on this one. Channel mode. Right. And I'm going to turn on this one. Channel mode. Okay. So hopefully you can see that. So when I key up this one on the left, this one's going to light up. See that? And when I key up this one, that one's gonna light up. So standard quote unquote walkie talkie behavior, right? Um, we are using the same frequency here. Um, and so in a perfect world, these two radios can communicate across a distance of, I wanna say a mile or two. Uh, but where we ride, we're pretty lucky when we can get a half a mile because you know ham signals do propagate with terrain, right? And so it just depends where you're at, what kind of terrain you're riding in, and um, the distance that they're going to uh, work is going to vary greatly. So essentially, uh, we set these to a frequency we all know. Um, you can lock the radio. And so now, if I press buttons, nothing happens. You can still transmit, but you can't change the settings. So when you stuff this in the backpack, like I will in a second here, that prevents the radio from being um, modified in any way while you're riding. 
Okay, so let's take a look at how we have this set up here. Um, so this is my riding backpack, it's just a USB backpack. So I have this microphone hooked up to my strap, kind of run it up the side of the strap and to one of my pockets here. So I have my toe strap in here and this is where I usually put the radio. So basically you just connect it like this, plug it in nice and good and I jam it in here. It's kind of a tight fit but I like it that way because that kind of keeps the plug um, from coming out. It also keeps the radio from bouncing around too much and uh, getting damaged. So stuff that in there, zip it up. As you notice the antenna does stick out which is why I don't want the longer whip antenna because that was, like I said, smacking me in the helmet. But now the radio is hooked up to this microphone and so what I'll do is hopefully not knock everything over. Um, if I key up this now, this is the key right here, you'll see this radio light up. Right? And vice versa. So this is both the microphone and the speaker. So when I'm wearing this on my back, I'm essentially just reaching down and hitting this button and talking to it. And you kind of want some distance between your face and this uh, microphone because it is a fairly cheap microphone. And so if you speak directly to it, you're going to end up uh, basically overpowering um, the radio and it's going to come out kind of hard to understand on the other side. And as you guys notice, I barely speak English to begin with. So uh, I want to make sure I have some distance when I talk. Okay. So let's talk about this microphone really quick. Uh, so this microphone has been through hell and back with me and it's held up pretty good. Um, so essentially this is the microphone. Uh, it's also made in China. Um, I'll provide a link to it below um, along with some links to the radios. Uh, I get this from Amazon as well. I think you can get it on eBay. Um, but again, these are cheap Chinese products. And so um, unfortunately, those are the only places you can get them. But it just comes with the microphone, a little card, and essentially just, you know, like you saw, plugs in. Um, Nothing fancy. It's got a nice little clip that actually works decently well. Um, you can find cheaper microphones for these Bofeng radios on Amazon and like I said on eBay. Um, I would not recommend getting the Bofeng microphone um, or any of the $5 ones because honestly they're garbage and they're almost impossible to understand when someone's talking through them and half the time they don't work. This one has proven to be pretty good. Once in a while um, you have to kind of wiggle it into the plugs um, uh, into the holes, I mean, for the plug. I just lick it and stick it in, <laughs> which isn't the best thing to do, but it does seem to prevent it from not working. But once in a while, uh, it won't work when you first plug it in. So we always do a comms test before we leave to make sure everyone's microphone is working correctly. Okay, so one thing I wanna talk about really quickly here is um, the FCC. So as I mentioned, um, the FCC has a bunch of rules in place and I am not here to tell you what they are, okay? You need to do your own research and figure out uh, what the FCC has intended by the different um, sections of their rules. Um, I am a licensed ham operator, and so uh, me and the other ham operators in the group um, can legally use these radios for communication. The FCC also has a rule that says that during an emergency, anyone can use any frequency for a transmission, meaning in an emergency, you can use this radio on ham frequencies, not be licensed, and not be in violation of FCC rules. Now, how do you define an emergency? That is for you to decide. Um, but needless to say, a couple of our buddies that are not licensed still carry their radio in case something happens to them. They get trapped under their bike, you know, they hit a tree, uh, eaten by a bear, something, right? And they still have an ability to reach us if necessary. Now, one other thing worth noting is these Bofeng radios are not very much liked by the FCC. In fact, last time I checked, um, they are not approved by the FCC to work on ham frequencies because they are kind of a wild child. You can do a lot with this radio that you're not supposed to be able to do. For example, these radios can transmit on FRS and GMRS frequencies, um, which does violate the FCC rules, and I would not recommend doing that. Uh, they're capable of doing it, but they're not supposed to be. Um, so again, the Chinese manufacturer uh, decided to ignore those rules, and therefore the FCC uh, is not happy with these being sold. Um, however, we choose to follow the rules and we choose to operate within what the FCC has recommended with these radios. And therefore, we don't believe we're in violation of any of those rules. Anyway, guys, thank you for sticking around and listening to me babble for a little while here. Uh, if you have any questions, like I said, leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.